So Sam, how often are brands using clean rooms today? Not as often as you would think. Like it's still very nascent uh, with most of our clients. We have been using uh, clean rooms for five years, but it's always that the, the publisher clean rooms that we've mostly used. Um, we are slowly moving into the world of like more advanced use cases and, and multi-party clean rooms, uh, but it's still very nascent. Is this technology right now really mostly for brands with lots of first party data or not necessarily? I don't see it as a first party data technology, really. It's, it, it, it's available for everyone. Um, we, we're working with CPGs, for example, who have use cases around uh, sharing data with retail, uh, retail partners, understanding consumer journeys using uh, uh, third party data partners. Are clean rooms a win for publishers wh where they've in the past had to battle the walled gardens for data supremacy? It is going to be a win if we find a way to better share data. Today we, we lack that, uh, that standardization of, of, uh, of collaboration. I think this is the next step. Like if we can make it work with multiple publishers and if the publishers work together to fight against the Google, Amazon, Facebook, uh, then we have a real opportunity. Now, what do you make of Google and Amazon in particular owning their own clean rooms? Is that good or bad for the way this industry is developing? I think it was a good first step. Um, I don't think they're ever going to open their ecosystem to other partners. They have no reason to, really, no incentive. Um, but they will have to collaborate. Um, the way they will have to collaborate and the way they're doing it today is really with the cloud side of their business. So Amazon has now Amazon Clean Rooms. Uh, it's not particularly dedicated to, uh, to publishers. It's, not, uh, it, it's really open to everyone. That's the way they are going to, to enter the marketplace, really. So Seb, do you think your company or most companies are going to look to, to partner in this sector or build or buy their own technology? There's really two approaches on the market, There's, uh, um, especially on the agency side. We have always had that strategy of, of partnering uh, with the best in, in the marketplace. Um, there's a whole lot of other agencies that have made the choice of, of buying or building the, their own, mostly buying. Um, and I see um, there's a lot of, of companies that claim they have a clean room solution today and it, it's not really the case. So what we are trying to do is re-educate the marketplace on what is a clean room um, and how to spot the, the, the imposters in the, uh, in, in the, in the group. Um, and we are really partnering with the, the, the best. Um, and look, we, we've already built a strong partnership with, with Habu. Uh, we have a partnership with Snowflake, with uh, InfoSum, and we're really technology agnostic when it comes to clean rooms. Lastly, has the industry finally settled on a post-cookie solution or not yet? I don't, so I don't see clean rooms as a solution to the post-cookie world. I think it's one of the solutions. It's not the, uh, the, 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 the silver bullet for everything. Um, the reality is that we are already working in a post-cookie world. There's a, there's a whole lot of signals that have already disappeared. Um, and so the, the marketers have had to adapt. Um, what we are telling our clients is, any opportunity that you have to do test and learn today is, uh, is a competitive advantage that you have against your competition. We think that you need to uh, um, dedicate a part of your budget to, uh, to test and learn. It's super important. Uh, clean rooms are a part of the solution. I think for measurement, it opens incredible opportunities for, the, uh, for, for marketers, for data collaboration. Um, we have plenty of new use cases. Um, I think they are part of the solution, um, but, but definitely investing in a whole lot of other solutions.